Hi everyone and a very warm and sincere welcome to our information session devoted to our postgraduate offerings in the discipline of strategic communication. My name is Dr Susie Karmas and I am pleased to, to welcome you to, to uh, this evening's session. I'm the co course coordinator for the discipline of strategic communication within the School of Communication within the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. Um, I very much look forward to um, explaining some of our offerings in the postgraduate space in strategic communication and I'm delighted to be joined by a um, very dear colleague, Jackie Polson, one of our lecturers in strategic communication, as well as Jabin de Kaiser, um, a student who has completed one of our master's courses in strategic communication. Um, and we're here tonight to talk about the programs on offer and why we think they're um, important, interesting and engaging, um, but also really importantly to answer any questions that you might have. So please, any questions that um, come up, if they're not answered in, in the session, in our delivery, please pop them into the Q&A box and we'll make every effort to answer the questions, um, hopefully within the session this evening. If not, we'll make every effort to get the right answer to you speedily. So. First thing I would like to do, which is customary at um, UTS, is an acknowledgement of country. I would like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Aurora Nation upon whose ancestral lands our city campus now stands. I pay respect to the elders, both past and present, acknowledging them as the traditional custodians of knowledge for this land and as people of great ingenuity and innovation. And just by way of um, courtesy and housekeeping, um, I would like to advise you that this session will now be recorded. Uh, we will record audio, screen share and our presenters, um, but we will not be recording any video input or any audio from you. Any uh, further information that you provide during this session is optional and will be captured by UTS for um, those reasons stated there. So please be advised that the session will be recorded, but no recording of you, neither video nor audio will be recorded. I'm super proud to teach um, in the discipline of strategic communication at UTS, and I could talk for days about the wonderful innovations and changes that we've made just in the past few years to make sure that the content that we deliver is as future focused, um, industry oriented and engaging as possible. And we really rest our, our claims to this excellence on three main points or pillars. One is that everything that we offer within strategic communication points to a high degree of transdisciplinary innovation. And what that means is we are always um, consulting with um, the school and the faculty industry advisory board and constantly integrating their suggestions and feedback into course offerings that we know will cultivate graduates that are fit not just for jobs of today but for the jobs of the future. And one of the ways that we develop and cultivate those kinds of graduates is with a high degree of transdisciplinary disciplinary innovation, which means, for example, that many of our subjects actually fold in a presence and input from other faculties, including, for example, the um, UTS Business School. So if you haven't stepped foot on our campus um, and you've yet to do a campus tour, that first image there is of our very famous, um, beautifully designed business building. And, you know, we draw a lot um, on the expertise and colleagues and, and um, input from, from colleagues from other faculties. So what we hopefully develop um, are courses which are holistic and which draw on as many facets of expertise and research innovation as required 
for cutting edge strategic communication professionals. The other thing that we take immense pride in is the, the caliber of our distinguished academics and industry leaders um, that we don't just consult with, but actually put in the classroom virtually or on campus. So you know that the people that designed your subjects are at the forefront of both research and also um, industry um, you know, innovation and consulting. The image in the middle there is of our wonderful Professor Maureen Taylor, who as we speak is consulting um, with the World Health Organization about you know, um, strategic communication responses to the COVID pandemic. Um, and you know, in terms of you know, top shelf uh, you know, research leadership, it doesn't get much more prestigious or important or compelling than consulting with the World Health Organization about appropriate, appropriate communication responses to the COVID pandemic. Um, and she designs and teaches several of our subjects in, um, in postgraduate strategic communication. And we take immense pride in, you know, the, the, the insights and, and the amazing, um, you know, research and also industry credentials that she brings to our discipline. The other thing that we take immense pride in is that throughout your course, you can expect um, a really seamless integration of theory and practice, or to put it another way, the academic and the applied. So the third image there is of our distinguished professor, Jim McNamara, who, you know, spent decades carving out, you know, um, a, a role of uh, in innovation and, and leadership in industry and has brought that amazing insight and expertise um, to UTS where he is now helming a major research centre looking at health communication and many of my colleagues in strategic communication feed mm. into that research and, and that growing area of influence and expertise um, and again you know Jim McNamara like, like um, Maureen Taylor designs subjects and you know literally authors the textbooks that, that we use and we take immense pride in this really robust and and kind of you know um, unapologetically ambitious integration of theory and practice uh, we want to make sure that our graduates leave our courses um, not not only uh, equipped for the the job skills and the skill sets needed for now but with transdisciplinary mobile um, skill sets and, and, and you know a knowledge base which will serve you well for years if not decades to come and that's how we do it with this thorough integration of uh, research and industry and transdisciplinary input and integration. So there are three main ways that you can undertake a postgraduate study program in strategic communication uh, at UTS. Um, and the first one that I'll speak to is the Master of Strategic Communication, which is very popular, um, highly inclusive, and for a lot of um, applicants, probably one of the more, you know, accessible and open, um, you know, postgraduate um, options in strategic communication. Um, and I teach into, into this program with one of my subjects. So the Master of Strategic Communication um, comprises of nine subjects in total. Six of these are what we call core subjects, and these are foundational, you know, essential base, baseline subjects that all students do, and they really open your eyes up um, and, and, you know, your critical faculties to all the most pressing phenomena um, that intersects with strategic communication um, in the 21st century. And in addition to these six core subjects, you choose three electives. So generally speaking, a full-time student will complete a Master of Strategic Communication in about one and a half years uh, with around three subjects per session, or you can undertake this in two to five years part-time with one or two subjects each session. And, you know, we're mindful that a lot of our postgraduate students are balancing postgraduate study with life <laughs> commitments, family commitments, and often full-time work. Um, so we understand that this will most likely represent one you know, important component in what is already a busy life. Um, and so we will, you know, package and deliver our subjects and our, and our delivery in ways that 
um, are quite, if not flexible, amenable to those busy lifestyles. So I spoke earlier of the core subjects that are required. Um, and these are those six subjects. And hopefully you can tell by how they're named that we actually canvas the, the spectrum of issues opportunities, challenges, which are most pressing in, in the contemporary work of strategic communication professionals, exploring human communication, understanding and engaging audiences, strategic communication and integration, influence in the digital world, that's my baby, uh, intercultural and international communication and managing public communication. And you know, these six subjects will give you a lovely deep dive into the world of contemporary strategic communication. And it will equip you with this really strong insight into both the theory and the practice of strategic communication. So to advance your careers and to refine your professional skill set, um, we'll take you across the essentials. Um, it's like an essential toolkit of contemporary strategic communication. Um, and in addition to those course subjects, you will choose three from this bank of electives. Emergent media practices, corporate and marketing communication, contemporary advertising practices, organisational communication and culture, stakeholder engagement or professional practice. And what we've tried to do with those electives is, you know, create subjects which perhaps speak more specifically to your career aspirations or trajectory. So depending on what you want to develop or you, where you want to end up, you choose your electives to refine that specific, you know, knowledge base. Um, so it's, it's, you know, it speaks very much to contemporary phenomena and we canvas the, the opportunities, the challenges, um, and you know, the emerging variables of contemporary professional communication. Uh, so it's, it's a deep dive into an exciting and dynamic world. Another option that we offer is the Executive Master of Strategic Communication. And this is aimed more so at those professional strategic communication, um, you know, practitioners who have probably, you know, uh, worked, you know, in, in, in strategic communication at a fairly senior level for minimum of, say, three years and who are looking to really take that next step professionally and upskill in ways that will drive their their professional development further and higher. So it's aimed primarily at those who are already in the Stratcom space and who want to have a, you know, a more sophisticated and, and robust insight and um, engagement with um, the, these you know, contemporary issues, challenges and opportunities. So the exec masters comprises um, of nine subjects in total. Three of these are the core subjects from that bank I mentioned earlier, and there are four stream subjects. And what we've effectively done is kind of divide the exec masters into two main streams, corporate and marketing communication or government communication. And that division is based on our consultation with industry bodies and advisory boards, but also what we noticed was the general traffic of postgraduate applicants to, to postgraduate study in STRATCOM. Generally, um, these applicants tended to come from either the corporate and marketing space or government you know, communication. And so what we've tried to do is reflect and, and serve what we have identified as the two main, I guess, traffic pathways coming into um, an executive master in strategic communication. Generally, a full-time load um, in the exec masters takes about a year with three subjects per session, including the summer session, or part-time to, to the five years with one or two subjects per session. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, there are three of the core subjects that you take, and it's these three that you undertake in the Exec Masters, understanding and engaging audiences, STRATCOM and integration, and exploring human communication. And you will specialise in one of these two streams, either corporate and marketing comms or government comms. And before anyone says, oh, Gladys isn't in charge anymore, um, or, you know, I, I, I wanted to represent this, this space with Qantas and with uh, Gladys Berejiklian, our 
until very recently, Premier of New South Wales, just to underscore, I think what the last 18 months have shown, shown us is just how important um, strategic communication is to so many stakeholders in society. And so, you know, for many of us in New South Wales, for example, or, you know, Dan Andrews in, in Victoria, that 11 o'clock presser had become, you know, almost kind of chiseled into our, our daily routines. And even we know, even though we were seeing, you know, an address from one person, we know that there was a team of Stratcom professionals around Premier Berejiklian um, behind the scenes. And, you know, with an amazing iconic corporation like Qantas, we knew the, the, the value of their interventions in this space. What's Qantas going to do? Um, and I think what the last 18 months has shown us is that good strategic communication goes a long way for a lot of stakeholders. And so if you're already in this space and, you know, you're querying maybe the, the, um, the value of refining your skill set in strategic communication or, you know, investing in, in um, development of your professional skills. I think if nothing else, the last 18 months of living through and working through a pandemic has only, under, not it sounds really cynical and opportunistic, but it's true, has really underscored the value in so many ways um, of good strategic communication. So now is the time to refine those skill sets. Um, I should point out that the executive masters requires three years of relevant work experience for admission. And um, I'll be providing very shortly more you know, granular information about the application process for the different offerings. Um, but it's, it's evaluated literally on a case by case basis. Um, and so your application for the exec masters will be supported by a CV, but also a personal statement that speaks to um, your background and your interest in the course. Um, and one of the features of the Exec Masters is that every student enrolled in, in the Executive Masters produces um, a major project, which we have very carefully designed with your specific career aspirations and trajectory in mind. So the major project is tailored for each student's professional pathway and aspirations and it's negotiated directly with with the teaching staff um, and is also delivered with the UTS business school and with creative intelligence and innovation another unit at UTS speaking to that transdisciplinary um, involvement that I mentioned earlier and the students each student will produce a major document to inform a strategic communication plan and and we conceive this as a, a document that, that you know will fit in night, like a jewel in your portfolio that you can take back to your professional place um, as a demonstration of your excellence in, in this area and your attainment of a superior outstanding skill set by virtue of having undertaken the exec masters. So if you're contemplating that particular um, pathway, um, you, you've got this beautiful outcome at the end that because it was developed with your career aspirations in mind, we know will be of strategic value to your career aspirations. Another option um, in the postgrad space is a graduate diploma in strategic communication. Um, and this is very much aimed at those who don't, you know, don't want to necessarily commit to you know, what's involved for the masters or the, or the exec masters. This is another option which you might find more accessible and convenient. It comprises of six subjects in total, four of the core subjects and two of the electives. So already it's a more kind of abridged version of what we offer. Uh, full time, it's one and a half years with three subjects per session or you can take it over um, to two to five years part time with one or two subjects each session. And you might find that a more workable or manageable, um, you know, entree into the postgrad world in strategic communication. So, you know, we've got we've got several, um, several options there for you. So now that I have gone through the, the basics, if you like, uh, the lay of the land, I would like to invite Jaden de Kaiser, who I understand is a freshly minted, um, you know, uh, student graduate of um, of uh, a master of strategic communication. Jaden, did you want to jump in and share some of your experience or experiences or insights studying this? Definitely. Hi, folks. Yes, my name's Jaden. Pleasure to be here. Nice to see you again as well, Susie. 
Um, yeah, a little bit about myself. So I've been um, across the comms space, I guess, for about eight years in various um, kind of capacities. I, um, I started out in financial uh, comms. I worked for um, a, a, um, an agency that worked for um, large real estate companies and investment banks. And I was kind of uh, running run of the mill kind of things there, writing media releases and all that, that kind of stuff that juniors do early on. And uh, I was loving it and it was going really well. And then, um, yeah, a couple of life circumstances changed for me, uh, including having kids. So um, it kind of changed my focus for a couple of years and I ended up moving to a much smaller company in the construction industry, still working in communications, but uh, in a much less, um, I guess there was much uh, less scope for growth in that particular uh, environment. And uh, it came to the time when uh, I was kind of getting track on my life again. The kids were organised and things were happening again. And I thought, okay, look, it's time to step it up again. And uh, one of the ways that I really thought that would be helpful in that, in that quest was to do a master's in communications. Uh, my undergraduate was actually in business and, and commerce before that. And I had discovered a love of comms in that. But then, uh, yeah, I thought communications would really be the thing for me and a master's would be the right thing to do. So I guess I, um, I started uh, researching different programs. I was looking at different unis, obviously, doing my due diligence across those, those kind of things. You know, it's a, it's a big investment in time, so I thought I want to do the right thing. And I think that what really came across to me about uh, the UTS strategic comms was a couple of things. Just the breadth of, um, of opportunity here in terms of what you can study from really uh, beginning stuff like theory of comms, a couple of those core subjects there, theory of human communications, uh, and then, but also through to much broader areas, stakeholder engagement is one of the subjects that I really enjoyed. Influence in the digital world, one of Susie's subjects, absolutely brilliant subject to be able to really stretch you and, and go that little bit extra to um, stretch, really stretch my knowledge. Having even been in comms for a little while, not in very senior positions, so it was great to be stretched in that way in so clearly, obviously, real world applications, which was just fantastic um, for me to see that and really uh, captivated me. And I guess the other thing that did captivate me early on was when I was researching strategic comms and, uh, and seeing uh, Jim McNamara's name and Maureen Taylor's name pop up everywhere. And these guys, are, they're titans in the field. They're absolutely, they are the real deal. And to see them both at one uni, you know, like Maureen Taylor uh, with Michael Kent, she developed dialogic engagement. This is a, it's a pillar of the, of the, um, of the industry. And same goes for Jim McNamara with things like organisational listening. They're just absolutely cornerstones of, uh, of what you do in communications, often with even, without even thinking about it. So to be actually, to delve into the theory behind that was absolutely brilliant. Um, a couple of my favourite subjects I think I mentioned there, definitely um, things that Maureen was working on were absolutely uh, challenging at times and uh, really stretched me. So things like uh, uh, understanding and engaging audiences was really good and her one uh, managing public communication as well. There was a, uh, one of my electives as well that I really loved was creativity and innovation in communication. And uh, the, the, the stretch in there was really, uh, nice to feel that and uh, I would thoroughly recommend that subject if you've got space in your electives to pick that one. I think the, one of the most valuable takeaways for me is to not treat this, uh, this study as, um, as just work or not treat it as your undergraduate. This here is an oyster that you can suck, you can get everything out of this. So I did basically all of my studies online but I was still able to develop a really strong network online uh, of contacts uh, in various fields. And it actually landed me the job where I'm at now, that network through there. So combining the network with the degree is, is really, a, it's a, a strong suit to put on your CV when you're applying for that next job. And, uh, and for me, it wouldn't have happened without the masters and it wouldn't have happened without the, the network. So if you're gonna do this masters, really commit to it and commit to getting to know your lecturers, getting to know your, um, your colleagues while you're, while you're studying with them and uh, getting involved with as much things as you can and, and, and having a real crack at it. It's not something that you could, um, it's, it's, it's not an easy course. You've got to actually commit to it. So uh, I'd, I'd really suggest doing that. So yeah.
that's it from me, I think. Thanks so much, Shaven. And you know what? You, you, you used this word a few times and it's a delight to hear. You talked about stretching yourself and that's one of the pillars of the UTS experience. We, we pride ourselves on developing lifelong learning and I, I think it's amazing that you came from industry with professional experience and insight and still leaned into that the challenge but also can you know you now speak of having been stretched positively and that's what that's what we're trying to do so thank you so much um, and Javen I think we'll stick around for a little bit um, I'll just briefly talk about and oh this is there's a lot of text and words on this on this slide, so I'm not going to go through it verbatim. But just to let you know that the admission requirements vary slightly across the Exec Masters, the Master of Strategic Communication, and the Grad Dip in Strategic com um, Communication. And so you'll see there, kind of, you know, and this sort of, I suppose, um, kind of reflects what we expect you to bring to each of the various um, offerings. At the, at the, you know, whether it's exec or the masters or the grad dip. Um, so if you are contemplating an executive masters, um, we do ask for three years relevant work experience. And, um, you know, you can also provide your narrative by way of a personal statement, which um, speaks to how you see the um, exec masters further in your career aspirations, as well as a CV, which sets out quite simply and, and plainly and truthfully um, your relevant work experience or if you're considering the master of strategic, strategic communication we ask for an academic qualification whether it's a bachelor's a grad cert a grad dip or a master's um, or whether it's um, if you're considering the grad dip then the um, admission requirements are a little bit looser so you know if you have not completed the bachelor's master's grad dip or grad cert um, then you can provide a personal statement of around 500 words and a CV so what we've done there is provide a kind of you know a suite of options and also entry points so depending on your circumstances um, and depending on what you have done prior there are you know multiple ways that you can access further study in in um, strategic what I would like to do now is open up the floor to questions um, and answers which will come from myself and Jackie is Jackie still with us and Jamie you still around so those of you I, I can't see anything in the Q&A um, no the we don't have any questions yet Susie but so I don't know if anybody want has any questions we're here for you Something just, uh, somebody is asking Jabin, did you study the course in face-to-face -face or online mode? Was it difficult to hand, handle studying online? Over to Jabin. Yeah, I was, uh, we were chatting about this just before the meeting. I spent my first three weeks face-to-face uh, -face, and then there was a, a week-long pause while the staff of UTS performed a virtual miracle and were able to transform their subjects, I imagine it was an incredibly stressful time for them, uh, and transform their subjects into a virtual. We conducted most of our, uh, all of our learning after that on Microsoft Teams and on Zoom together. And although it was challenging, uh, I definitely, uh, what it is, is it, it, it actually prepared me for the workplace. I've just spent another four months working from home, working on Teams and Zoom, and it was another opportunity to learn. And I really couldn't fault UTS in, in how that transition occurred and the quality of the learning that, that happened after. I was so impressed that I was still able to get one-on-one -on -one time with Maureen to talk about assessments and one-on-one -on -one time with uh, all of my tutors if I wanted to be able to chat about things, spend that half an hour on Zoom a week just to talk things through and, uh, and work through it. It was actually in some senses I think uh, better for me online. I live out in um, the Blue Mountains and getting to uni was gonna take an hour and a half each way. So to be able to do it online was actually really beneficial for me and my family in the end. And uh, I, I don't think that my learning experience suffered at all from being online. So I, I loved it. That's great, Jay, but I think your experience also speaks to passionate, passionate teaching staff. Um, we, will, we will communicate what we are passionate about by mime, dance, haiku, whichever way gets the content across. So when we, you know, how many times did we hear the word pivot last year? Everyone had to pivot and we went there. And I think that also speaks to the, the professional skills that comms develops, agility, 
and um, you know, being able to kind of work with dynamic conditions. Interestingly, the second question, how relevant is the course content to the changes brought on by COVID? So the fantastic question. And what I have found both in research and also in, in teaching is that if anything, the pandemic has underscored the relevance and importance of effective strategic communication. Um, you know, many of our researchers are experts in things like organisational communication, crisis communication, stakeholder engagement. And what we've learned over the last 18 months is, um, you know, society's access to reliable, factual, quality information is literally a life and death matter. But also we have become increasingly aware of just how messy and complicated the, the media um, ecosystem is. And so, you know, a lot of organizations and individuals are facing crises of legitimacy and trust. And it's now more important than ever to be able to craft effective um, messaging that cuts through often the noise and the din of um, communication, which is no longer tidy and discreet, but is online and is digital and is often messy. And so a lot of the, the skills that we are, are developing for effective strategic communication obviously weren't designed with COVID in mind, but what COVID has done is just underscored the import, importance of these skill sets. Mm. Um, and I'll just add to that, Susie, before we get to the next question, the Public Relations Institute of Australia just released research that the, in, the industry as a whole had grown um, fairly significantly in the last 18 months compared to previous periods. Um, but we've got another question here as well. What subjects do we both teach? So I... Um, I'll start there, Susie. Um, so I, I this year um, have run uh, stakeholder engagement uh, and organisational communication and culture, and I have also in the past taught um, communication. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm calling it the wrong name. Strategies, Strate uh, st strategies of communication. I've, I think that's the correct. We have an undergrad name, something very similar. Sorry, um, and I think from my perspective, uh, so I'm a lecturer and I also work in industry and like a lot of my colleagues do, um, I, I like how professionally focused a lot of our subjects are. So there's a really strong integration of theory and practice and we will um, in a lot of subjects integrate um, either guests or live case studies or other real life um, practical examples. So for instance, um, my stakeholder engagement class this year uh, had a guest case study presented by the New South Wales Department of Health about a stakeholder engagement plan um, on a Randwick City Hospital upgrade. So that was a live, large scale project in the specific area we were studying that they were able to be presented on and then do some sort of workshopping activities around. And so as someone who both works in um, academia and in practice, being able to expose and connect the two together. So expose students to real world examples and connect how theory um, and research kind of complements and further grows that um, really, yeah, I think um, is exciting. Yeah, before I speak to my subject, someone's asked about um, accreditation. We are accredited by the PR Institute of Australia, but I should also stress that we are in constant dialogue and, and consultation with um, our industry advisory board, which has representatives from Google, Facebook, PricewaterhouseCooper, to name just a few, Screen Australia. Um, and we, we constantly, you know, let them see what we're doing and we're informed by their suggestions about how we could improve our offerings for the graduates that, that you know, they, they would want to hire. Um, I teach a subject called Influence in the Digital World, um, which is, you know, it's fascinating. It looks at, it looks at fake news and filter bubbles and echo chambers and, and you know, Twitter bots and, oh, it's, it's fascinating. Um, but the reason that I'm passionate about teaching strategic communication, and I think I speak for all my colleagues, Jackie included, is that we have to update our content every offering because the world of strategic communication is constantly changing and we have to constantly make sure that the research and teaching reflects what's happening and you know so the content that i that i wrote in 2018 is already dated because the world has changed communication has changed media and technology have changed 
our stakeholders have changed, the way that people share information has changed. And so we need to make sure that what we teach speaks to the world as it is now, but also, especially at postgraduate level, equips our graduates to, to deal with emergent changes and challenges. And one of the concepts that we deal with a lot in Stratcom is emergent media and what that refers to, not new media, but the weird kind of hybrid forms that are taking shape as we speak and producing novel challenges for professional communicators. Um, and I think, you know, in, in this discipline, that's what excites us all. Um, we cannot rest on our laurels. We, we, don't, we don't settle on any one kind of theory or ism for too long because the world changes and we have to change with it. And we are excited by that. Um, your, your, your teachers are researchers and researchers have to speak to the world as it changes. And you'll see that in, in what we teach. So, you know, um, that's what I think excites most Stratcom, um, you know, teachers. Would you agree, Jackie? Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Any other questions? We're here for you. We wish that we, we absolutely wish that, you know, we, we could be doing this on campus. I know in real, we're humans. We're designed to speak to each other like this, um, not like this in, in real life. So hopefully we can welcome you on campus. Jabin, a question for you. Did you find it difficult to network with fellow students while studying online? Uh, definitely not. Uh, there was ample opportunity and I think every single one of my uh, subjects at one point in time, we were split up into groups to chat, to talk about the subject and I, and often to talk about our industry experience or our career and was, there was a good opportunity to share uh, what was going on in our, in our professional lives around that. Uh, and then also the, the group projects together, we had, I think there was one semester where we didn't have group projects, but the other two, we did have group projects and they were brilliant to be able to bounce ideas of each other uh, and to, uh, to work through that. So it was on one of the group projects that I, um, I yeah, started networking with a couple of people and I carried that friendship through my subject and then through my course, sorry, and then a, a job popped up at that person's company later on and I kind of knocked on the door and they kind of, yeah, just helped me through it and it was brilliant. It, it all worked really well. So uh, definitely did not find it difficult at all to network and uh, can really um, say it was great. Um, so I've got an, another question here. Um that I, I can answer. I'm, the question is, I'm working full time and I was wondering what the assignments are like, other exams and what will have, happen if I have an urgent timeline at work and I'm unable to meet a deadline. So um, that's a really excellent question. Um, and basically as, as lecturers and as course coordinators, we understand that the majority of our postgraduate students have busy lives and often busy and full careers. And so, um, while there are set deadlines and there are set expectations for what will be prepared for class, we're really flexible around um, uncontrollable elements in your life that might impact your ability to do that. Uh, and, and especially when you're actually in a subject, you're, you're liaising every week directly with your lecturer or tutor, so someone like me or Susie, and we get to know you and we, we can be really flexible around that. So it's not unusual for someone to send us an email a few minutes before class saying, you know, a crisis has happened at work or a crisis has happened at home or um, someone needs a bit more time because they've just had really big, you know, work deadlines that have competed. So um, the course is very flexible around that. And I think the online delivery, a bit um, to what um, Jabin was talking about earlier, I think the the, the flexible delivery now that was sort of prompted by COVID has made it more flexible for a lot of busy working people. Um, the travel time is reduced. We are accessible as, as lecturers at, at other times other than just class times. So it's definitely something a lot of our students face and that we are really flexible around working around. Absolutely. And, you know, in terms of exams and what have you, 
generally speaking in you know in communications courses you don't have we don't really have like exams per se we tend to design our assessments in ways that reflect the the skill sets and applications that would be required professionally um, and so that said there is a variety of assessment modes but you know i can tell you that every week i would get emails from students who you know who had a deadline we can respect a deadline a deadline come up from work but from a client or whatever you know it happens um, and things have to be shifted and we were highly amenable to that I mean we we want to help you succeed and complete so you know I think you'll find your teaching staff highly amenable to those conversations um, the major project in the execstrat.com so it's it's what you will be working and this is it's hard to talk about this generally because it is by definition bespoke and individual so you will be liaising with your you know your teaching staff in that subject the major um, project uh, subject to design a, a product which speaks directly to where you are professionally and what you want to showcase your learnings i just used a bit of corporate speak there um, from doing the exec masters so it really is something that you design in in collaboration with your teaching staff so i assume if you're contemplating the executive masters i assume that you have carved out a particular place or role professionally and that you're contemplating an exec masters to extend yourself intellectually but also professionally and you know you have in mind a, a an outcome of a product that will showcase or demonstrate back to industry or your your employer or the world um, your kind of your uh, completion of this program so you literally design it in close collaboration and consultation with the teaching staff um, and so it will reflect your career trajectory but also aspirations um, and you know ideally it would be something that would be embedded in your professional portfolio um, and I'm, I'm afraid I can't get because it is you know on um, it's negotiated on a case by case basis so it would be you know it really needs to speak to your specific career aspirations um, so yeah sorry I can't get more I have to frame it in those generic terms because it's it's kind of like a lump of clay that you design um, with your teaching staff. Any other questions? Any other questions? I think on this next slide, okay, um, I've got some you know email email addresses there. Look, I would be delighted to chase up or respond to any questions or queries or concerns that you have. They might come to you later. Um, I would sincerely like to thank Jackie and Jobin for joining us tonight. I'm delighted to hear that Jackie shares my enthusiasm for Stratcom. Delighted to hear that Jobin's experience, um, you know, doing the Masters was so positive. There was, I mean, you got a job out of it, Jobin. As outcomes go, that's pretty, that's pretty impressive. Um, but even in those trying testing COVID conditions, Jabin was able to have a meaningful, enjoyable networked process um, or experience. Um, I would be delighted to see, you know, those of you attending tonight or viewing this a recording of this, I'd love to welcome you on campus so you can see us, you know. Um, but, you know, uh, any questions that, that pop up later on, please don't hesitate to, to reach out get them to us, we would be delighted to address them um, and, and hopefully welcome a new on campus in 2022. Um, and I think that's it for this evening. So with that, I'll say thank you, Jackie. Thank, thank you, you, Raven. Thanks very much. And good evening all. Later.